Updating tonight's stories. Industrial estates to get cooler and greener by planting trees. Singapore unveils plans to use the sun and the sea to become a bright green spark. And to power those efforts, Singapore will import electricity from Malaysia in a trial. Well, another way for Singapore to achieve its green goals is to look to low-carbon energy solutions. For more on that, we're joined by Dr. Subod Mihai Salka. He is the Executive Director of the Energy Research Institute at NTU. Uh, Professor Subod, welcome. Now, how significant is this boost for low-carbon energy research, with Singapore setting aside, what, $49 million for it? Oh, absolutely. I think it's a it's a very challenging uh, 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 period for us uh, to really target uh, low carbon technologies. Uh, as everyone knows, back in 2015, uh, Singapore was audacious enough uh, to announce uh, that we will cut our carbon emissions by 36 percent, the, the emissions intensity by 36 percent compared to 2005 levels. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Singapore did even better. Uh, we raised our targets and specifically said that by 2050, uh, we would reduce our overall emissions by 50%. So that really is a very audacious goal, and that would need very broad measures, uh, which would include energy efficiency across everything we are doing, deployment of uh, solar panels on every rooftop, and perhaps on a number of water bodies. It will also need new ideas in terms of uh, uh, hydrogen as well as carbon, and also cooperation with our neighbors and with companies and institutions from all over the world. And Professor, you label Singapore's ambitions as audacious. Uh, currently then, where does Singapore stand on the global stage with regards to the, to the field? So again, uh, just to elaborate a little bit, uh, the reason I say audacious is like other countries, we are land constrained, we are in the tropics. So the amount of uh, wind energy or tidal energy we can harness is minuscule. The only fallback we have for renewable energy is really solar. And we have set very, uh, I mean, today we're announced uh, two new targets in terms of solar to hit 1.5 gigawatts by 2025. And we already know of our target of two gigawatts by 2030. So that really uh, represents an acceleration of our efforts in terms of uh, deployment of uh, solar. In addition, I think we would need new ideas in terms of reducing our carbon emissions. And that is where uh, I think we need to look global in terms of uh, the kind of solutions that we can pursue and deploy in Singapore. Uh, looking ahead, uh, Professor, what do you see as some of the gaps, maybe the obstacles uh, that you uh, foresee? So even if we deploy two gigawatts of solar by 2030, there'll be significant gaps in terms of reducing our emissions by 2050. And there are only really two major ways we can, we can, we can, we can put in uh, major technologies to address that. The first way is to look at hydrogen. And the second opportunity is to, is to capture and utilize the carbon uh, that we emit. Uh, in terms of hydrogen, the true form of uh, zero emissions hydrogen is when we generate hydrogen completely from renewable sources. And that is possible only if you have excess renewable energy. So what that really means is we would need to partner with uh, countries like Australia, where renewables are, are, are uh, beyond what the demand needs, where hydrogen can be generated, hydrogen can be converted to a form that can be transported, typically through an ocean tanker. Then it can be received in Singapore, and the hydrogen can be utilized both in power generation as well as, uh, as well as in industrial applications. So that is the hydrogen which is from renewables and referred to as green hydrogen. So that is the biggest opportunity in terms of uh, cutting our emissions. The second aspect is uh, carbon capture as well as utilization. And there we have unique challenges because our carbon streams are quite dilute. Sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, I just want to thank you. We're going to have to wrap it up there. But thank you very much for speaking with us this evening, Dr. Subod Maisalka, Executive Director of the Energy Research Institute at NTU.